yeah, the working title for this video when I started writing it was LG Death Watch. Okay, here's the deal. Uh, looking back on my notes, the LG V60 from 2020 was one of my most used phones in 2021. My V50 saw regular action as a production tool, and the wing is still in regular rotation for this channel whenever I need to go out and shoot B-roll in the field. Without releasing any new hardware, the K-Series and Stylo kept LG in third place for sales in the United States for most of the year. They've only recently slipped to fourth place last quarter behind Motorola. And while the pace has certainly slowed, LG has maintained respectable support for security patches with a few late operating system updates in the mix too. So the end of this year got kind of crazy and I genuinely wasn't able to break down every single patch and every single update on every phone in separate videos but I wanted to take some time to share specific thoughts on my collection of recent LG devices. First up, the not so goods. A trio of phones are in rough shape at the end of 2021. I don't think anyone's gonna be too surprised about the Sprint flavor of the V50. It's not even really a V50. It's literally a V45. And I'll never forgive Sprint for ordering LG to make them a phone with bands that would not support or would not survive the T-Mobile merger. It's a terrible way to treat the customers buying an expensive phone on your network. Ditto my G8X, an excellent piece of hardware, the first smooth action hinge for a wraparound dual screen design, and updates have been kind of lean. I'm doubly disappointed on my AT&T model where I haven't been able to get any support for this phone because I don't have an active AT&T SIM. That doesn't make me want to do business with AT&T. Quite the opposite, actually. Oh, and the one that pains me the most, my T-Mobile LG G8 is still sitting on the sidelines. Easily one of the best, a monster performer from 2019, a jack of all trades and master of several, except it's still sitting on Android 10. This was actually the phone I was most looking forward to producing a standalone follow up video once it got an update. We just don't make phones like this anymore, and that's a shame. But on to the better news. Most of the 2020 phones are a bit more up to date. Where security patches are in good order, the V60s, the Velvets, and even the Wing are all finally on Android 11. Now, it seems silly to praise updates for last year's Android release, but considering how aggressive LG was at shuttering and moving their phone employees to other divisions, many of us had really low expectations that LG would actually live up to any of their software update responsibilities. This is also compounded by the last year of hardware complicating some of that update strategy. LG went out on a really ambitious series of devices. And as we've seen recently with Android 12 updates, Getting all that stuff right is a challenge under the best of conditions. The Velvet, for example, wasn't one phone, but three. Now, I know I'm only holding two phones, but for dramatic effect. There was the Snapdragon 5G version, a Snapdragon 4G version, and a MediaTek 5G version. If I were a betting man, I would have put solid money on the MediaTek flavor of this phone getting completely ignored. But happily, it's running Android 11 with the best of them. Returning to the Velvet makes me kind of sad. It, it's an incredible feature complete phone. Priced in the same tier as a Galaxy A71, I doubt we'll see another device quite like it anytime soon. Maybe never again. We had solid camera performance, one of the best headphone jacks available on any phone outside of the legendary quad DAX, memory card support, active pen stylus support, 5G, a great desktop mode, and a nicer build than most phones in this bracket. It feels really nice in the hand. This was kind of a perfect vote with your wallet kind of a phone for headphone jacks and memory card slots, but but people kind of slept on it. And I still think it's hilarious to think back on all the people who complained about how thick the dual displace case was. It's a case. It's something that's designed to protect the phone and you can take it off of a shockingly thin phone and it's still thinner overall 
than the Galaxy Fold 3. Techies are pretty bad at tech. This is where we take just a quick tangent. Yeah, it's the idea I think techies have always had the hardest time properly understanding when you do a lot of custom work to Android and make it do things. Android wasn't really designed to do, it's significantly more taxing on updates. It's kind of frustrating how many enthusiasts act like an update is only just that thing that sort of changes the look of their launcher without fully appreciating how much work needs to happen under the hood. Which brings us to the wing. You know, being the most recent, it's certainly the most in need of just a little polish. You know, the phone tackles some of the heaviest custom UI I've used on any Android device ever. I'm running into a few more of those stutters on transitions, especially the camera. It seems to switch orientation slower, but otherwise actual in-app performance seems to be about the same. I haven't lost any ground on the benchmarks I like to run, and the wing can still keep pace with Snapdragon 888 while video rendering in PowerDirector. Better still, many of these custom UI elements have improved. I really don't like how twitchy a Galaxy Z Fold 3 can be when you're swapping from the outer screen to the inner display and reformatting that content. Android 11 on the wing has included better controls for swapping screens, moving content back and forth, and the new touchpad mode is phenomenal, especially while you're scrolling. The wing is just deliciously ambitious. You know, we've got the swivel screen on a hinge, a pop-up selfie camera, a dedicated gimbal stabilized camera. I still regularly turn to this phone when I need to shoot B-roll out in the field. And some of these new tweaks make it even more fun to use. Moving on, of course, the crown jewel phone. The V60 is just the perfect device for LG to go out on. In 2020, the only deficit of this phone was the lack of a high refresh rate display because you really need that 120 hertz when you're playing Genshin at 50 frames per second. Couldn't help myself. This was a battery champ for 2020. It's the last quad DAC phone. So please do me the favor of eye rolling at every reviewer who ever wrote off good mobile audio. As every music streaming service is looking to include at least CD quality playback. If you actually want to hear that quality, you've got to spend over $100 on a dongle DAC to get close to what the V60 included inside this phone. This thing easily goes toe to toe with my $200 THX Onyx. Quad DAC deserved to be talked about as a $200 feature. It's that good. Like what I said about the Velvet, we just won't ever get another phone like this ever again. This was truly the most modular phone since Motorola had Moto Mods. You could make it into anything for anyone. High quality media playback? Check. Some of the best controls for content creation built in? Also check. Active pen support for productivity? Check. A desktop mode competing well against DeX? Oh, check. You can add a whole second screen with stylus support? Yup. Check. Take that dual display and turn it into a portable gaming console? Check. Arriving $200 cheaper than a base model Galaxy S20? <laughs> Yeah, it does that too. And it's not only on Android 11. We've gotten several solid bug fixes and security patches since the OS update. The most recent landing just before Christmas. Another decently sizable patch improving performance. I've had a lot of fun reviewing phones in 2021, especially the more ambitious experiments. But there's still no one phone that has risen to the challenge of replacing the LG V60. If you really used everything this phone had to offer, literally any other device, no matter how much more powerful or how much better the cameras might be, anything else is gonna be a downgrade somewhere else. And lastly, I just wanna throw a little love to an absolute champ of a phone, the LG V50, or specifically the Korean and international LG V50s. They beat my Microsoft Surface Duo 1 to getting Android 11. You know, the first generation of dual display, but an incredible performer to this day. The Snapdragon 855 has aged phenomenally well. Even for enthusiasts, there's very little outside of the most graphics demanding games where this SoC still can't accomplish high levels of laptop grade work. I wish the V50 had received the more updated flavor of Screen Plus, that's LG's desktop mode, but it remains one of the best all-time audio performers 
ever made. Not just for headphone playback, but also for recording. In video and audio recording, there's a professional flavor of capture where this phone backs off the heavy-handed noise reduction many phones use. And I find that more often wrecks audio than enhancing it. The V50 even manages to outpace the V60 in that regard. Earlier this year, I was reviewing a portable Rode microphone and the best phone to demonstrate that mic was the V50. Hey, it's Juan from the future here, just popping in real quick. In the time it's taken me to shoot this video and edit it, it seems the LG G8 has gotten Android 11 on Verizon. So, fingers crossed, my T-Mobile version should be getting it soon too? ish it would certainly make for a nice little new year's treat to get android 11 in 2022 so uh enough of this interruption and back to the rest of the video so that's the gig in a year where lg delivered no new phones and shuttered most of their phone division turned out to be a pretty solid year for LG customers. The phones I have in my collection are going to end up as museum pieces. They're gonna be keepsakes. This is a company that delivered great competition, but they lost the plot on how to reach their customers. For myself personally, they represent fantastic platforms. We could, we, we can get hyped on a newer, more powerful CPU or get really excited about five more frames per second in demanding games. But going back to a phone from 2019 shows that a well-built, feature-complete gadget can easily still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with more current, premium phones that lack some of these awesome lifestyle features. A phone is not just a CPU or a camera or a screen. And while there were always exciting features and groundbreaking innovations to play with, LG phones were always greater than the sum of their parts. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing to the channel. I greatly appreciate all the support, especially those of you checking out the links and the merch down underneath all of my videos. You can catch all of my affiliates and partnerships on Some Gadget Guy, but I, I could also recommend checking out the list of names. Scrolling by on my screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals on the planet. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next video.